G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday sort of lunchtime here in Australia. We are oh so close, oh so close. $1.982 trillion. Creeping up on that $2 trillion mark. I really do think it's going to take a little bit to get us over there. We can see Ethereum has kind of, you know, broken out. Its dominance has risen. ETH, uh, sorry, Bitcoin dominance is really, really starting to drop. And is that like the start of, you know, alt season, like the real alt season? Again, the true crazy gains that have been made is when Bitcoin dominance starts to drop below 50%, gets down into the 40s and 30%. That's when the altcoins are absolutely going mental. And you're just seeing, you know, literally life-changing gains that, you know, some people have been lucky and put $500 into things and, you know, literally made like a million bucks from uh, $500. Now that is a complete outlier though, not too many people are gonna do that. They're either just really, really smart or just got really, really lucky. And they literally 100X, 1000X uh, their money. So don't think that it's just that easy because it's definitely not. But those are the kind of things that can happen when we get into the, you know, again, what we would call the true alt season. But look, market cap up, uh, gas prices still pretty high, not quite the 200 they were the other day, but Ethereum dominance is rising now that uh, it has finally broken over that $2,000 mark. Again, it is down, it was around about 2,100 and something not so long ago, but this could just be the start of a bigger move. We are in the weekend though, so again, so far, over the last probably month and a half or even more, the pullbacks have been coming on a Sunday, so you know, that's kind of Monday for us, but Sundays, uh, based on the states and that, is the day to buy generally. So are we going to see that, or is this gonna be one of those weekends where we just keep going? Like there is no pullback, it just keeps going. But it's not happening for Bitcoin at the moment. Bitcoin is still really struggling to break that $60,000 mark, but we'll have a look at some stories about that uh, and what I think's going on. Look, it just keeps, you know, keeps hitting that $60,000 level. And yes, it keeps getting rejected, but it keeps getting back up there. So I don't think we're dead by any stretch of the imagination. I, you know, getting ready to go into the bear market. I don't think we're quite there yet. There's still a lot more to come, but let's have a look. All right, yeah, Ethereum doing well. Look, tons of green. I mean, look at that polka dot, 15%, nice. It's just basically a sea of green. There's hardly any red there. So. Let's have a look. Who's really pumping in the last 24 hours? We can tell there's gonna be a few coins. Right, Holo, they've been on a screen for a while, doing really well. BitTorrent, likewise, Polkadot, so one of the bigger movers. EOS, out of nowhere, and most people probably thought that was dead after Dan Larimer left it, but this one is interesting. XRP, the price is starting to pump. Even with the uh, SEC lawsuit, it's still doing quite well. But look, we've seen this before. It'll pump a little bit and then, you know, in a few days time, a week's time, it'll basically lose almost all those gains that it's made. But it's been above 50 cents for a while, so that's pretty good. Zillica doing well, Maker, Sushi, The Graph, uh, uh, sorry, Sushi X, Sushi, VeChain. VeChain's been performing nicely. I'm quite happy with that. It was really ranging for a while. So look, there's some good movers. And again, really the top three are the ones that I think are the best. Anything above 15% in 24 hours is great. Likewise, anything more than 15% in 24 hours in a loss is pretty bad, unless you're up like 100% and then you're not really worried. But let's have a look. It looked all fairly green before when we just looked initially at like maybe the top 20. Has anything not done so well in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? All right, are we Filecoin? It was always gonna have a pullback. That's you know simply what happens. It got to its peak, so for me, I am going to buy more Filecoin, but I'm going to wait till I see a bottom. And look, it could be at the bottom now. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Bitmax token, Pundi X, Pancake Swap, Pacone, Stacks. I'll be looking for another position to get into some more Stacks. Phantom. Look, no really bad losers here, except for sort of Arweave. But, well, not even. They're still under 15%. So we've had some pretty good gains and not really... Uh, any losses that are too bad. Pundi X Old is hurting. They had a massive pump though. So of course they're going to be coming down a little bit. So gains pretty good. Losses fairly minimal. All right, let's get on to the charts. Let's have a look at Bitcoin first. 
Right, so as we can see, Bitcoin did break out. Now it's still just kind of ranging. It's an indecision candle, indecision. Still, both of these are kind of looking like indecision candles, but this new candle here, it's very early. So it's two o'clock in the morning there, uh, UTC time. So this could easily go either way, but that's three days of indecision. So Bitcoin is just unsure what it wants to do at the moment. If it does have a pump over the weekend, then there's likely going to be a correction come Monday for a CME gap to be covered, and that's what's generally happened. It's not a 100% that it happens all the time, but geez, it happens a lot that basically, yeah, you just have to be careful buying into a pump over a weekend that it might yeah, retrace and dump a bit uh, come Monday morning. But we can see it's broke out of this channel, but now we're just traveling sideways a bit. So is it possible that again, we sort of have a bit of a sell-off come back down and you know test this kind of level where you can see the wicks here and we've got a bit of confluence uh, over here as well quite possible that we come down and do that uh, over the weekend but no guarantees in life now some coins I will look I was speaking about a while ago all right so secret network I really like secret network uh, and I've spoken about them before so we broke out of this downward trend now this is against Bitcoin so it's moved up, having a bit of a retracement, but it's still a breakout, so we are bullish at the moment. But it doesn't mean it's just gonna fire off and rocket from here, because this could be something like this. So we looked bullish, came back and retested this. Now have a look at this. We were very close to this line. Breakout, are we gonna now come back down and maybe retest more around about sort of here, or come back down and test here? Not really sure, waiting to see, but for me, uh, yeah, I'm dollar cost averaging into secret network at the moment. I do think it's getting ready for its next leg up. And particularly if we're really going into that old season, then I'll be hoping that uh, secret network does really well. But so far, looking pretty good. That's a confirmed breakout. The graph, I spoke about this the other day and I said it's got a pattern that it repeats. Pumps up, comes down, starts to pump up again. And then it'll break down to some old resistance. Old resistance becomes new support. Look at that. Now perfectly broke out. It's even retesting this downward trend here. It's still bullish though because it's retesting this. And looks like it's starting to make its way back up. So for me, the graph is looking pretty good. Again, never financial advice. There's no guarantees in life. This is just what the charts are showing at the moment. And also have a look where it is like it's it's testing an old all-time high trying to use it as support so again this makes me even more bullish again it's not to say it can't break down but this there's a bit of confluence over here you can sort of see it here wick wicks touching touching uh, and touching and now hopefully it's going to use it as support before it makes its next leg up Ave, likewise it follows a fairly common sort of pattern gets in a downward thing breaks out gets in a downward thing breaks out gets in a, down, a downward thing, <laughs> a downward wedge, broken out. So for me, I think Aave is looking pretty good at the moment. It's come down and tested this. Again, what was once a bit of resistance, resistance, uh, support and resistance, or so their resistance, resistance, resistance. And now it has found support off that old resistance. So I expect it to make a next leg up and then maybe it'll come back down and start to use this as support. Maybe, no guarantees. Could end up using something up here as support, but I'd say it's probably gonna be somewhere down around about here. But that means from here all the way to here, it could be nothing but gain territory. And then again, it's most likely gonna come up higher than this. But no guarantees, but for me, Aave is looking pretty good. Synthetics Network. So I did speak about this. Are we gonna to touch this and come down and find our way back down? We've been going up in the dollar, which is really good, but uh, and we have gone up against Bitcoin, but look at this, perfectly touched that line. And now what we're waiting to see, is it gonna break out, maybe come back down, bounce off it, like it sort of did here, it was a breakout, bounced off it a lot before it then started to make its next move up. So that's what we're waiting to see. So I'm not jumping into any SNX at the moment, I'm waiting to see if it's gonna break out or is it gonna reject and we're gonna fall down uh, and stay below this line at the moment? Now look, you could move this line in all fairness. You could say that, oh, that looks uh, fairly good. 
and that maybe this is a breakout. And look, either either, you know, when you do these chart patterns, it's just what looks like it would be uh, have some confluence. And this has probably got a bit more confluence than that other one that I showed. So we can leave this one here. Uh, and then that means we're in a confirmed breakout. But we'll just have to wait and see. For me, uh, synthetics, like I said, it was more a roundabout sort of there for me. I think it was because I had it on the uh, log chart before. So we'll wait and see. Well, I'll just leave this here for now. Because that's probably got more confluence anyway. And if that's the case, then we're already in a confirmed breakout. But that doesn't mean this can't come back over and retest this line before making its next leg up. All right, Ethereum. This is the one that everyone's talking about at the moment. And this is against the dollar. All those were against BTC that we were looking at. So breaking out against BTC. Got in this wedge, broke up, came back down, tested old resistance, started to use it as support, came up, broke down. Now it sort of, you know, again, used old resistance as support. So now we've broken up. And is this going to be a big move? And where does this go from here? You know, you can put in fib retracement lines and things like that. I don't use fib retracement too much. Again, that's more for traders, really. I'm not saying you can't use fib retracement. Uh, as an investor, I just generally don't use it too much. So for me, it's in price discovery, and we'll just have to wait and see uh, yeah, where this goes. But things are looking good for Ethereum. All right, a couple of stories I want to cover off on. So Bitcoin mining difficulty sets new records. Bitcoin miners uh, capture $1.5 billion in the last month. That is in one month they got $1.5 billion. So again, how can you be bearish when things like this are happening? You know, yes, Bitcoin dominance is dropping. That just means people, because again, this is how it works. They start with money. They buy into Bitcoin when they're coming to cryptocurrency because that's the thing everyone hears about. They see the gains and they're like, how good is this? But then they start to see the gains in other coins and they go, maybe I should put some of my money into other coins. So that's why the dominance is dropping. That's just simply people now venturing out into the altcoin world and starting to chase the bigger gains. But they will all go, well, not all, but a lot of them will go back into Bitcoin eventually. Once we do hit the bear market, Bitcoin is going to retreat the least compared to other coins other than stable coins, obviously. And that's why... It's good to have uh, your money or you know some of your profits in Bitcoin because when the bear market comes, it won't get hammered as bad as the other ones. And we just don't know what the next bear market's going to be like. But plenty of money in Bitcoin mining at the moment. I don't know how anyone could think that you know the chances are that we're going down from here. Again, not financial advice. It could do. Who knows? I just don't think it will. All right, Ethereum. Ethereum breaks all-time high. We looked at it. It's up 7% in a daily increase. So it has taken a little over a month for the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap to paint a new all-time high of nearly $2,100. And we're not too far off that. Let's go back here and have a look. $2,100. Again, I do think that we're going to have a little bit of a pullback sometime over the weekend, sitting just under $2,100 at the moment. But I think come next week, Ethereum is really going to start to move. I really do think we're going to start to see uh, just what Ethereum can do. I still think it's going to be held back a lot by the gas prices. Uh, it's more the rich people are going to be able to get into it. It's not so much the little people. Well, the little people could go out and buy Ethereum, and as long as they're not trying to do any smart contract stuff with them, then they can simply you know, increase their gains from there, but they can't afford to do any of the smart contract stuff. The gas prices are just way too high. All right, Chainlink. Chainlink releases native substrate uh, module to bring its oracles to Polkadot. So they've teamed up for a while. So Polkadot Parachains can now choose to add Chainlink price feeds to their runtime. So Polkadot and Chainlink have announced the release of Chainlink's price feeds as a module or palette in Polkadot terminology for the substrate blockchain framework. The release means that any project building on the substrate framework, which includes Polkadot and Kasama parachains, as well as the independent blockchains, can integrate Chainlink oracles through a simplified library. So again, this has kind of been building for a while. And it is going to be the case where I don't think there's going to be just one that wins so ethereum isn't gonna you know just basically be the be all and end all if it gets the scaling sorted there's still going to be room for polka dot there's still going to be room for uh cardano 
there's going to be one big winner. Who that big winner is, I'm not exactly sure. I'm, my money's on Ethereum at the moment. But in saying that, I have been building myself a position in Polkadot, uh, in Cardano, uh, and likely have to start building uh, a bit more of a position in Adam as well, because Adam's got some stuff going on. Now, the announcement comes uh, as the latest result of a long-standing collaboration between Chainlink and Polkadot, now offering a tangible product that can enable a number of DeFi-centric use cases on Polkadot. So this could be something that draws you know, more more DeFi projects from Ethereum to Polkadot because they don't have the gas fee problem at all over there. All right, so interesting. Again, we talked about XRP has been, you know, it's been going up in price. It's actually up 170% since the start of the year. So that is good for anyone who got into XRP at the start of the year. It's not so good for people who were into XRP, XRP last year uh, as it was almost a dollar uh, at one stage and now it's only worth about 60 cents so it's still down 30 percent from its old all-time highs that does kind of indicate to me that maybe it could be a good position to get in because it's still down so it's got some room to move but i for me i just can't do it while they have the sec court case going on as soon as that is sorted absolutely i'm happy to get back into xrp as long as they're found not a security but until that happens you know, I'm do, you know, 170% is great uh, since the start of this year, but I've had coins that have done way better than that. So my money has been better, you know, put into other coins. I still have a position in XRP. It's just very small compared to what it used to be. All right, JP Morgan. So now analyst at Wall Street banking giant and former Bitcoin skeptic JP Morgan have said Bitcoin could climb as high as 130,000 in the long term if it can continues to see volatility converged with that of gold. So again, Bitcoin's been traveling sideways for a while and we go back to Bitcoin. It's kind of just bouncing around. But what is the one thing that you can see that's kind of happening? Like we get here, bounces around. Makes its next leg up, makes its next leg up, and look at these lows. They're getting higher and higher and higher. So Bitcoin is still moving up. It's just hit a point, and it's this $60,000 mark, that it's really going to take sustained buying for a while from people for it, for it to make its next leg up. And I do think Bitcoin does make its next leg up. I don't think we're anywhere close to any kind of serious retracement. Now, again, never financial advice. That could totally happen tomorrow, and I could be proven completely wrong, and I've been proven wrong before, and I will be proven wrong again. Uh, I, I, yeah. No one knows exactly what's going to happen. It's just based on time in the market, experience and things like that. And that's all I speak to you from is from my own personal point of view and the experience that I've had, excuse me, in the markets over the last sort of four or so years. This looks like, uh, again, indecision and it could sort of break back down, retest 56, 57,000 uh, over the weekend before we then make it next leg up. But We'll wait and see. All right. Anyway, that's it from me. It is the weekend. I hope you're enjoying it. Things are looking pretty good. Things are on the up and up, so that is really good. And keep an eye on that Bitcoin dominance. I mean, if it continues to drop, particularly once it gets below 50%, which it hasn't been there for quite some time, I think we're really going to kick into an alt season then, and things are just going to... They're going to get crazy, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how else to say it. You know, when you're seeing things literally 10x in a matter of months, and that's what can happen. I mean, they can 10x in a matter of weeks sometimes, but particularly sort of over a week period, you know, they could go up 100% in a week or even more, similar to what we've had already in the last kind of few months. You know, we've been having a bit of an altcoin season, you know, since 14th of March. So that's almost a month while Bitcoin's been ranging altcoins were doing well but yeah that isn't even the crazy altcoin season yet uh, and here's the thing though if we do go into that crazy altcoin season where bitcoin dominance is down around 30 percent i think that means we will be at the peak now whether we're about to do that now or not i don't know we'll have to wait and see but look maybe bitcoin has kind of reached its peak it's at sixty thousand, and we go into that last kind of blow off top where the altcoins just go absolutely mental before we have the next bear market that is something to consider 
I don't think that's what's going to happen. But again, as I always say, I've always got my plan for if this happens, awesome. But what's my plan for if that doesn't happen? So if Bitcoin doesn't continue past 60,000, do I have my plan? Absolutely, I do. I've already taken some profits. If, again, Bitcoin dominance drops down to sort of 40%, 30%, and altcoins are going crazy, for me, that's my indication that Bitcoin's reached its peak, the altcoins are now having their last hurrah, and it's probably time to, you know, take some serious profits off the table uh, and get ready for the next bear market. But again, I've been proven wrong before. I'll totally be proven wrong again. I'm not too proud to say that. I don't know everything. That's just where my head's at and what I'm thinking of. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Be kind to one another, sorry. Hopefully you're all on that gain train and I'll see you next time.